All right. Hello, everybody. Last time I talked to you, I was telling you about how oh my, my dear sweet number one was in jail in the brig. And I was working at Great Lakes in the laundry, which was hard work, but at least I got to see him. You know, he would, they let him off weekends. So he would come to my little apartment and we'd sleep on that little half bed and that was not fun. Okay. So anyway, we slept on that little bed and then finally his time was up. He had served his time. There's that cat again. Bella, here she is coming across again. There she goes. Let me, Bella, out of the way. <laughs> she is a pistol. Anyway, I tell you what, God is good. She's a good cat. We adopted her from some people, left her at a house next door to his office. So we got her. Anyway, she's a good cat. Where in the world was I? Oh, yeah. So he said, don't you be coming out there. And I said, ha, 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 ha. So three weeks I waited and I had saved my money. So I bought me a ticket on the Super Chef train, which you travel 39 hours, two nights and three days. And you're in California. That was something. And that train leaves right out of Chicago. So I got on a bus and went to the train station, bought my ticket. Got on that train. Set up. Oh, that's so hard on an 18-year-old. I was young, and I did do it. Hey, don't you like this? Look, that hides this right here that you get when you're 90 years old. I bought a whole bunch of scarves <laughs> that I'm going to be using. All right, and I'm enjoying this. This is fun. Anyway. You know, a lot of you people have shared, and and you want to see me, so I'm here, girl and guy, whoever you are. I'm just having fun. I love y'all. Anyway, I'm on that train, setting up sleeping for two nights, and finally I get to California. The, I tell you, I love that scenery. That scenery was fantastic, and I just loved the trip. It was something. I'll never forget it unless I get dementia. You know, I'm 90 years old, but so far it hasn't happened. Who knows? I'm praying I don't get dementia. I do take turmeric, and that's supposed to help that in case you start getting it. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, I am 90. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he, I've made it. But anyway, I'm out there, and I arrive in California, and I get off, off the train, and I catch me a bus. I get off in California fairly close to San Diego, where he's in boot camp again. So what do I do? I catch me a bus to the base. I thought I'd just go out there and see if I could find out what was going on. So here I am, a cute little old thing. At 18, I was as cute as a button, as I have told you. So I had this little hat with a veil, you know, like in 1951, 52, little high heel shoes about that high. And I got off that bus, and I had on a skirt back then. I didn't wear jeans all the time. I was dressed up Sunday school style. I would go to church. So I went out there, and I said to the guard at the gate, I said, could you take me to whoever runs this place? I would like to talk with him. He said, well, yes, ma'am, I sure can. They treated me with such respect as a little girl. So he got me in his vehicle and took me straight to headquarters, and he let me out. So I walked in, and and I said, are you the one that runs this base? And he said, yes, I am. What can I do for you? And I said, well, I want to tell you the truth. My husband is not staying in the Navy good. He is going AWOL all the time. He's went AWOL twice, all the way from here back to Indiana. And I'm here to help him stay in the Navy, get through boot camp, and be a good so, uh, seaman. He said, really? How interesting. I said, yes, and I was just wondering if you could direct me to a place where I could get a little apartment and stay and be close to here, the base, because he'll be graduating, and I sure do want to come to his graduating for, 
boot camp because he didn't make it the first two times. He hitchhiked all the way home both times, and that's dangerous. He said, you know what? We, I happen to know that we have some housing over here that, uh, and they, he said, let me check this. And he got his list out and he checked it and he said, you know, there's an apartment empty. And he gave me the address. He says, I'll let them know you're coming. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And how do I pay for it? He says, they'll take care of it and you can pay them. There's that cat again. Anyway, so I got on the bus. Well, the man took me back to the gate, and I caught a bus and went on over to where that apartment complex was. A lot of Navy wives there and, and people in the service. And so it was a nice little apartment, one bedroom. Didn't have no dishes. It had a bed, refrigerator, stove, everything you needed. So I was within walking distance of a store. <clears throat> That's a tail of the store, and so I just walked to the store, and I bought, you know, a blank, couple of blankets and dishes, uh, two spoons, two forks, two plates, and I was in business. I had a place to live, but you know, as I was walking back, there was a bus that passed me, and it stopped, and it was a no yellow school bus, and it said on the side, church bus, so they stopped, and they said, hello there, uh, this is Saturday. Would you like to go to church Sunday morning? We run through here and we pick up people and take them to church. I said, praise the Lord. I said, yes, I would love to go to church. And it was a wonderful church. And, of course, I went Sunday morning to church. And it was great. And they were so kind to me. I tell you what, I'm blessed, folks. I have been blessed my whole life. God has went before me and made the crooked places straight. And that's a fact, Jack, because so many good things have happened with the help of the Lord. So I will let you know what happens later. I better shut up. You know, when I will tell you this right quick. When I first got married, I had to have major surgery. They removed my ovary and one ovary and a tube. I had cysts that were horrible. I was in pain all the time. Panky panky and was hell. Shouldn't have said that. So anyway, that helped me a lot after they did the surgery. But the doctor said, you will never have children. And we would have took the other ovary, but you would have had to be on hormones the rest of your life. And we don't want that for you. You're too young. So anyhow, you know, I had children later. The Lord healed me. And I had twins the first time. Y'all want to hear about that. They're wonderful daughters. I just adore them. And then I had a baby daughter. And, of course, the twins are now about 69. <laughs> They're catching up with me. And the 64-year-old, she's the one with the mean turkey. That I call her the attack turkey. He's an attack turkey. His name is Christopher, and he is mean. I don't wear red out there. That's what he hates. He's just like, I mean, he is vicious. So I don't go out there near him. She keeps the stick and keeps him off of me when I go see my daughter. Oh, I better shut up. It's it's running eight minutes. I don't know where the time went. That was so much fun. But I had a lot more happen after that because we took a trip home. And I tell you what, he was supposed to be stationed in Aus uh, let's see, Oregon, Astoria, Oregon. But because of the trip and something happened, he got assigned the USS Montreal, a troop ship, which changed our lives immeasurably. So I'll catch you again later. It's been fun. See you. God bless you. Love y'all. You're sweet people. Bye-bye.